Well, one of the things we wanted to talk about today was MPS score, and you guys do really good at your MPS score, and it's one of your, sounds like a North Star metric for your guys' business. It's one thing that you really focus on a lot. Now, maybe not everyone listening here knows the ins and outs of the NPS score, so we could just run through those briefly so they can get their bearings on, on why that's going to be important. So what is an NPS score? Maybe you could tell our listeners a little bit about that. Sure, the net promoter score. Um, so if you're not measuring it now, um, you can go through any number of companies um, that can do it for you. So initially, uh, well, right now we're using Medallia, and that's through Anytime Fitness Corporate. Uh, so they send out a survey uh, to members in some random fashion um, that says, well, the current survey says, um, overall, how was your, la- your latest experience with Anytime Fitness Lake City mm-hmm. um, on a, based on a scale of zero to 10? Um, so ultimately, you can actually have a score of anywhere from negative 100 to positive 100. Um, and our NPS score right now is 97, nice. which is, yes, the so they can, yeah, they consider, um, over 50 to be excellent and over 75 to be world-class. So wow. yeah, it's up there. Um, and so, you know, you get that initial score, um, that's my cat. Sorry. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um so Um, That score, you know, it's really zero to six is considered, you know, a distractor Mm -hmm. Um, and seven and eight is considered passive and nine to 10 is considered a promoter. So a promoter is somebody who's going to talk about your business, is going to recommend your business to their friends or family. So having, you know, that nine and 10 is what you're shooting for. And um, one thing we do that, I mean, you never want to incentivize members to give you a good score. Um, But we do put up a poster in the club that's super simple that just says, you know, that explains it. You may get this survey, Um, it's not spam. Yeah. And we would love for you to respond. Um, And then we have this, this, we just draw this out zero to six and we have an emoji that's an unhappy face, you know? And then, you know, and then seven to eight, we have an emoji that has just, you know, no mouth. You know, just and then you know, nine ten, we have the super happy smiling emoji, and you know, it's it's simple. It's it's not it's educating the members, but it's not like I said, incentivizing them. Yeah, well, I think too that that awareness element is probably so key yeah. because as you yes. say, like hey, people probably think that and say, okay, it's spam. I'm probably on their mailing list somehow. Whatever next, mm-hmm. um, and so if, if they can see that you guys actually made an effort whether or not that they stop and look at that sign on their way out, right. they probably noticed it uh, and just say, oh, okay, yeah, let's connect the dots. Hey, I actually really love what they're doing there. Boom, let's give, them, let, let, let's give our, our feedback. Awesome. With some of the negative responses. Um, we had somebody give us a five um, and in their comments, they said, we really, really wish they'd get a pool. Okay, well, we can't have a pool. It's not a possibility. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I wish we had a pool, you know, like a rooftop pool, you know, with cocktails. No, it's not going to happen. So anyway, we talked to the member um, because they do encourage you to uh, respond to every survey, Um, whether it's positive or negative, just, you know, just thank the member. Um, If there's any concerns, address them and do it as quickly as possible too. Um, so, you know, we got back to him and just said, you know, Hey, I know we would, we would love to have a pool, but it's not, it's not possible for us. Well, you know, about a year later, he gets another survey. He gives us a 10 and in the comments, he says, still wish they had a pool. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's fine. Still wish we had a pool too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we got another survey, which he gave us a zero. Okay. That hurts. That really drags down your score. Um, but you know, we reached, reached out to the member and, um, you know, he said in his comments that he wishes that we would defy the governor's order, lockdown order. Well, you know, we said, of course we can't do that. We would be fined. It would be reckless. It, you know, we could possibly go to jail. They were, yeah. that's part of the, the deal. Um, we're not going to do that, you know? So the next survey, sure enough, he gave us a 10 and no comments. So, yeah, you just got to reach out. You 
it's not going to be a perfect thing. No. Yeah. And I, I think too, I mean, first of all, you could look at your favorite restaurant and it might have some negative reviews. People weren't happy with it. Right. Like if it, if it was all positive reviews, I think I've actually even seen studies on this where if you go to download an app, if you, you look at a review online and it's a thousand five-star reviews, it's, it's almost like, well, that can't be right. That's almost too good. Huh? So, but on the other hand, if, you know, I think one thing that's really positive and powerful that companies do do, and I, if I see this happening and I see a real person responding to reviews, it gives you a good indication of what that company is like to work with or to be a customer of. If they, if you have some sort of review where you wish something was better and they give you a personalized response that doesn't say, hi, thank you for your feedback. Please send other inquiries to support at company.com. It's like, well, that's, you copy pasted that. So do you really care or do you just want to look like you care? Yeah. yeah address the concerns. And I, I always read the comments if I'm ordering something on Amazon. Yeah. And when I see the reply from the company, if it's sort of a negative review and it's a really positive reply and they refunded the product or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That makes a difference. It resonates. It really does. Yeah. Okay. So we've talked about what the, what the good score looks like and what a not so good score looks like. I mean, if someone's in the negatives, um, it sounds like there's some definite work to be done. I didn't know that you could have a, up to a negative 100. I don't know. I hope that's there's not too many people out there with a negative 100. No. Um, <laughs> think I, there's some root causes that need to be addressed uh, much, much farther beyond that, if so. But, and, and I think you've done a good understanding of like why someone should use this as a benchmark, right? Uh, cool. What other metrics do you guys think spin off from the NPS score? That, that you really like to focus on as a business? Sure. I mean, I think that the number one metric that we look at besides NPS is usage. Mm-hmm. And I don't think it gets enough, enough discussion, you know, in the industry. But, you know, it's, it's kind of obvious that if you have a high usage, those members are going to stay members. Mm-hmm. Um, so we really kind of, again, we, we communicate it to our members. We tell them that, We have this goal for them Um, and it's kind of a lofty goal. It's 12 times a month. Um, So, you know, we could be, we could say 10, you know, twice a week, it's doable. Um, But we give them that, that 12 times a month as the, as a goal. And um, what we do is we actually print up a list, um, which we post on the wall at the club. And it is amazing. Uh, I didn't know this would happen, but people actually flock to it every month. And if it's not up by the first, you know, they're like, Hey, you know, where's the list? There's the leaderboard. Yeah. <laughs> where's the, Yeah. And, you know, I've seen in other gyms, they would post the top 10 user list. Um, but the thing about that is that it's the same people every month, right? It's the people that are maybe retired that can come more often. Um, the people who don't have young kids at home or whatever, um, and the other thing is those, those lists frequently, it's like they're, they're there 30 times or 31 times or 29 times. And it's like, that's not realistic. I mean, if I were at that gym, I would never make the leaderboard. So I would never look at it. Mm-hmm. Um, but 12 times. Yeah, it's doable, you know, and our lists are really, really long. Um, we have like up to, I don't know, 190 people at a time on the list. Oh. You know, it's really, it's really extensive. Wow. So, yeah. I'm, I'm and not then, so good at math, but I'm trying to calculate what 190 times 12 is, and that's individual visits from those set members. That's awesome. Well, those are, that's the number of members that come 12 times or more. Yeah, yeah. Oh, or more even, yeah. Or more, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, that's true. Yeah, they could be there every day. Yeah. So at the end of the year, and we started this in 2012, we put up a list of the people who made it 144 times over the course of the year. And we started printing up t-shirts and my husband designs them and they're different every year and a different color purposefully. So we have to start repeating, but, um, you know, so that it's kind of a badge of honor. So you, you come to the club with your shirt and hopefully they're wearing them, you know, elsewhere. And we do see them turn up, you know, and Facebook. Um, so you get that and it's a free t-shirt for them and people just, they check on their usage throughout the year. They're like, what am I at? You know, am I going to make it? And it's really a great deal, you know, because you see that, um, 
it's that pride, you know, that they, they made it, that accomplishment. We even had one, one lady who posted, um, you know, on her Facebook feed that, you know, she made the list this year and she was pregnant for most of the year. So she's super proud of herself, you know, and, and that's the kind of publicity you don't buy. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's, that's the kind of thing too, that if, if they're posting that, you know, we, we've talked about this in our uh, conversation prior to sitting down that it's, it's not just about that six month transformation photo where they were unhappy and then all of a sudden, six months later, they're tanned and got a six pack and yes. bright, shiny place. Like it, these are the members that, as you say, when she was pregnant, like she was going through something that, uh, you know, people will probably say, okay, I'm not going to join the gym as much uh, because of this, but they can show them this is possible. And this is how this gym can support me in doing that. 